Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you're very welcome to this video all about the Mars Hydro TS 1000 Grow Light. But this isn't just a video that I have to make because someone gave me two free grow lights. It's a video I want to make and I want to make it because I want to make a video that's useful for anyone who's thinking of using grow lights with their orchids. There are a lot of things to consider and I've learnt I guess through trial and error so I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you now. So by way of introduction for anyone who's new to the channel, I want to say that I'm Rachel and I have grown orchids for very many years on windowsills in my home in Ireland without use of grow lights or any other artificial means to get them to flower and I've been quite successful with it and I've published a little e-booklet which goes through how I actually do it. And more recently I've acquired grow lights which I've used to try and get my more stubborn species Cattleyas to flower. And I've learned a few things about it which I'm going to share with you now. There are several factors to consider when using artificial light for orchids. And the first of course is the colour spectrum. And if you use any good quality grow light like the Mars Hydro TS1000 then you're guaranteed almost a full spectrum of colours and this is what plants need to flower. It's the quality that they would get in nature and that good grow lights replicate. But the second thing that you have to consider is light intensity. And light intensity is measured by lux in Europe and by foot candles in the States. It's easy to find conversion tables online, but for the purposes of this video we're going to talk about foot candles because a lot of the information about orchids comes from the States and therefore the reference is to foot candles. If orchids have insufficient light then they may fail to flower and we grow them for the flowers in the first place. Also they'll produce very thin leaves and weak growth but if an orchid gets too much light then it'll cause brown spots on the leaves essentially burning and who can forget my fabulous Schlumbergia which had two very tall flower spikes that reached up and up to the grow light and promptly turned brown and incinerated. So yes, heat isn't the only thing that can cause burns, light can cause burns as well. Also if an orchid has too much light then it may result in spotting or it may result in abnormalities in the flowers as sometimes happens with zygopetalums. So we want to avoid that. So if investing in a grow light, my best piece of advice to you is to get a lux meter. Now if you can't measure the intensity of light from your grow light and your plant fails to flower, you won't know if it's down to insufficient light or if it's down to some other cultural factor. So get a lux meter. Now I'm not advertising this, but this is one I got cheaply on Amazon for less than $20 and it registers both foot candles and lux readings and it's really really handy to use. There are also free ones available that you can download for your phone which I saw afterwards. Just make sure you check out that they cover the range that you need, that they actually work for the intense light of a grow light if you place it up close to it. So get a lux meter. With grow light in hand and lux meter in hand, the next question is how much light does my orchid need? And I compiled this particular table here, largely from information available on the American Orchid Society website and a couple of other sources. And I have filled in for the majority of orchid genera, the most common ones anyway, the light ranges that these specific orchids need to flower. Now 
anecdotally, we've all had success at lower levels than are written here in this table. But we need to remember that more people have failed at lower light levels than these than have actually succeeded. And another thing to remember is that these are ranges. So a range can include plants of different sub-ranges. So for example, the Cattleya, as you can see on this particular table, takes a light range of 2,500 foot candles to 5,000 foot candles, which is actually quite an enormous range. But included in that range is Cattleya skinnery. And Cattleya skinnery requires 2,500 to 3,500 foot candles. Also included in that range is Lelia tenebrosa and that wants 3,500 to 4,000. So if you can imagine, if your light intensity is 2,500 and you have a Lelia tenebrosa under it, the Lelia may fail to flower but if you have a grow light and the light intensity is set to 4,000 and you have a Cattleya skinnery under it, then your orchid may in fact burn. Yet both of these Cattleyas fall into the Cattleya range. So just bear this in mind and always, always, always acclimatise orchids gradually to an increase in light. I'll also take the opportunity to point out that certain orchid genera like the Oncidium Alliance has a really large range so you really need to know what particular plant needs what particular range in order to decide on the intensity of your light. I mean a lot of the Oncidiums I have sit very happily on my windowsills but there are ones out there that really need high light. And now for the exciting bit where we head upstairs to see where I have my brand new grow light, my Mars Hydro TS1000 and how I'm using it with my orchids. This is a full spectrum sun-like light and this means that it not only gives your plants exactly what they need in terms of the colour spectrum but it also makes sure that you have no red tinge to your room, no bordello feel which I absolutely hate and it covers a wide area because it's quite wide. There's no noise and although the light does heat up a bit, it's not really, really hot. It's extremely easy to install with these little hangers and little hooks and it went up in no time at all and it's easy to adjust as well. So you can just adjust the string here to bring it up or down. So to adjust the height that this grow light is from your plants it's really quite easy just uh, hold <laughs> the light here and you can just tug with this string here and it goes up which is really easy and then to bring the grow light down there's a little knob up here which you press up just holding the weight of the grow light press it up and then the grow light comes down very easy. And another great thing is that this grow light comes with a dimmer switch. And it's a dimmer switch that's on the outside so you can actually adjust it without taking the light down and taking off the casing and going through a whole rigmarole. So it's easy to adjust from 10% to 100% but you do need a very skinny screwdriver and that's just a tip I'll give you <laughs> if you want to adjust it make sure you have one of these skinny little screwdrivers on hand. Finally the grow light has a daisy chain function so you can connect up to 10 lights together. The dimmer switch was really handy when it came to acclimatizing my orchids to their new grow light and I started off with the in light intensity quite low gradually increasing it every couple of days without taking the light down and now we have the light at full intensity. As you can see I've chosen to grow Cattleyas underneath my grow light and these are the few that I'm starting off with to see how we go. Now I have Cattleyas 
not particularly species highlight ones, just ordinary ones. And although the original idea with the grow light was to have one that would facilitate the flowering of my species, what's also happened is that I have a lot of cattleyas and I have nowhere to put them. So this particular spot with this particular grow light just allows me to have a few more plants in my collection. Now, as you see, this spot where I have the grow light and where I have the cattleyas has no other natural light. There is a small window far away, but generally what we're relying on here is the Mars Hydro TS1000 to provide these plants with all the light they need. So now I'm just going to show you how I use the Lux meter and I'm putting it over here so we don't get mad reflections and light on the screen. Now it's switched off at the moment. I switch it on by pressing this red button and just wait until it stabilizes and I mean by that start showing a reading. Now you can see that the default measurement is the Lux measurement. It says LUX up here and the numbers are fluctuating all the time because obviously the light is changing. I'm kind of putting my head in between where the light source is and not. So I want to look at the foot candle reading because that's what we've been talking in up until now. I press the mode button once and that FC there means that we are now getting readings in foot candles and they're very low because we're over here in a dark corner. So let's go and have a look underneath the plants. Let's just see what light these plants are getting by placing it underneath here. So down here we're getting in the range of 3,000 foot candles. Now do you see that little multiplied by 10? What happens is that when the reading goes quite high then the display, it looks like hundreds but it's actually multiplied by 10. So two, that's 2,860. You see it's in the 200 ranges there, but it's actually in the 2000 ranges because of the multiplied by 10 down there. So basically that is round about 3000 foot candles that this particular plant is getting. And moving further out, I have encyclias here and the reading is, well, it depends where you start and you have to remember that it's the leaves that photosynthesize, not necessarily the base of the plant. So that's what's important. So we've got readings in the uh, 2000 foot candle range here for the encyclias. And encyclias generally tend to take a little bit lower light than cattleyas. So uh, that is fine that they're on the outer range here. I have my light plugged in here and there is a timer. So I currently have it set for 14 hours a day. And the light comes on at nine o'clock in the morning and switches off 14 hours later. So in winter, I'm going to reduce this down to 12 hours a day. And that brings me to the end of this video about growing cattleyas under a grow light, the Mars Hydro TS1000 to be precise. I hope you found it useful and if you're interested in buying your own Mars Hydro then check out the details of this video where there are links to various places that you can purchase this light depending on where in the world you are. Also, if you're interested in buying a Lux meter there is my Amazon shop, which you can find the link to also in the details of this video. And also the Mars Hydro Light is in there, so you could go in there and purchase both of them. Let's not forget also my ebook or booklet about growing cattleyas on a windowsill. It's called My Windowsill Monsters. And if you are interested in this subject, I, well, of course, highly recommend it. Thank you very much for watching. As always, hope you found this video useful. And if so, give it a thumbs up and check back for lots more orchid growing tips. Bye for now.